Hi everybody, we're back and we, as you can see right here, are at the Tower of London. Now I'm going to continue my series of execution sites in London and today, as you've guessed it, is the Tower and Tower Hill, the most notorious execution site here in the city of London. Now plenty of information coming your way. Um, I hope you're enjoying the tours, this execution series of tours. We have a good few coming your way, but it's not going to be all doom and gloom. I have some nice cheery stuff coming as well. Thanks for joining me. Just stay tuned. Uh, a lot of information and interesting information coming your way. On today's tour, we won't venture inside the Tower of London. However, my colleague Margaret published an excellent walking tour of the Tower, and we will include a link to this video in the description below. So we're going to start with a stunning view of the Tower of London, ladies and gents. The only castle in London built in the time of the Norman Conquest. Now, if you just look very closely straight ahead of you there, you will see one of the bee feeders of the tower. And he's starting his tour. And that tour usually takes place on the hour, every hour. It may have changed right now. Now, you're wondering why there's a two lions here it was always a man it was actually a menagerie at one stage as well uh, exotic animals were gifted to royal family members over the years even a polar bear at one stage now we all know about the executions the most famous executions inside the tower but quite interestingly there were very few executions inside the tower and anybody that was imprisoned there including Elizabeth I. I often think how she must have felt knowing that her mother had been executed in the tower while she was herself imprisoned in there. Also Sir Walter Raleigh, but it was really kind of uh, reserved for the upper echelons of society. They did live in quite considerable comfort. They, um, when you were imprisoned in there, particularly if you were rich, they paid for the privilege. Now, Sir Walter Raleigh spent uh, 13 years in there and he lived in there with his wife and two children uh, and he was served very good food and wine most days and he, I believe he even grew tobacco inside the Tower of London on Tower Hill on Tower Green my apologies but the majority of executions that we know about inside the Tower of course would have been Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard and the famous nine-day Queen Lady Jane Grey uh, they are buried inside the tower. It is said actually that Anne Boleyn haunts the chapel of Advincula where she is buried, as is Catherine Howard and Jane Seymour buried in there. Apparently she walks around there holding her head in her hand. It's also rumored that Sir Walter Raleigh um, haunts the Tower of London, can be seen smoking his pipe on the grounds. But you might not be familiar with one of the most brutal executions inside the Tower of London. And that was the execution of Margaret Pope, otherwise known as the Countess of Salisbury. And here's a bit of background information on her. Now, she was one of the last remaining Plantagenets and she was in favor with Henry, VIII, Henry VIII and the court initially. She was a devout Catholic and a close companion of Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. In fact, she was a governess uh, for a period of time to Queen Mary, who later became, well, Princess Mary, who later became the infamous Bloody Mary, which we spoke about at Smithfield's Market. However, when Henry VIII decided he wanted to divorce Catherine Aragon in the Catholic Church and was refused an annulment by the Pope, he declared himself supreme leader of the Anglican Church or the Church of England. Now her son was an outspoken, um, well he was opposed to Henry VIII and he was, which was a treasonous act at the time and we all know how sadistic Henry VIII was, so he fled into exile. His name was Reginald Pope. Now trying to exact his revenge on Reginald Pope, he couldn't quite exact his revenge on him as he was in exile in Europe so he decided that he would exact his revenge on his family members, including his mother, the Countess of Salisbury. She also refused to acknowledge him as Supreme Head of the Church of England. So she was arrested and her properties were seized. Thomas Cromwell actually searched her property and he 
in a criminal trial for her. She was convicted of treason because he produced the Shroud of Tunic or a Five Wounds of Christ um, evidence of that tunic, well, a replica of it in her home, which actually confirmed her devout Catholicism. Six months after the trial, this piece of evidence was logged. So uh, no doubt was a fabrication. She was convicted of treason and she was sent to the Tower of London. Now she spent two and a half years here being brutally interrogated. And in the end, he decided he was going to execute her at 65 years of age. Now she was brought to the Tower, as I mentioned, in 1539. And on the 27th of May, 1541, her brutal execution began. Now an inexperienced executioner was brought to chop off her head and he missed and she jumped up apparently the story goes from the execution block and fled around the tower until he eventually hacked her to death with 11 blows of the axe a brutal end to the Countess of Salisbury now contrary to popular belief the majority of public executions did not take place in the Tower of London the last public execution took place here on the 15th of August in 1941, and that was a German spy. His name was Joseph Jacobs. He parachuted in here to England during World War II. But the majority of the executions took place right ahead of you up here, where this tree is located, on Tower Hill. So you would have been taken from your prison cell, from the main exit of the Tower of London, you would be marched up here. Now you would have had a rowdy drunken mob of wenches and drunken men and commoners as they call them, all coming to celebrate the great public execution. And every time I walk this path, I often kind of compare it to, if you saw Game of Thrones, ladies and gents, you would have seen Cersei when she did that walk of atonement back to King's Landing. Um, they would throw rotten fruit at you. They would swear at you. They would call you vile names and you would be facing your execution up here on Tower Hill. So a terrifying walk to your final death. Now, we have mentioned before that executions were great festivities. In fact, they were like bank holidays or public holidays. So I'm just gonna cross the road here and I wanna show you where the majority of the public executions and some of the more famous took place here on Tower Hill and there's a lovely plaque dedicated to them but en route I just want to show you this is the church of the old hallows hi guys by the tower uh, for my American friends William Penn the founder of Pennsylvania was baptized in here John Quincy Adams the sixth president of the United States of America married his English bride in here and Samuel Pepys the famous British diarist and the reason we know of course so much about the great fire of London to this day witness the great fire from the very steeple of that church church of the old hallows by the tower so I'm going to take you up here it was a rowdy affair sometimes the executions proved so popular they would actually erect scaffolding and there has been reports over the years of people climbing up that scaffolding overly excited about the impending executions and they themselves the scaffolding collapsing one particular time I believe it collapsed and up to 20 people died now that's a bit ironic but here we have the dedication to the people who were executed here at the Tower of London Tower Hill now this is Tower Hill ladies and gents a lot of memorials this is a merchant navy memorial right here but a lot of different memorials but the most important one is the one we're facing right here this dedication to all the people executed at tower hill now some of the more famous that were executed here were sir thomas moore and he was high chancellor to henry the eighth and he objected to his move of supreme head of the church of england or the anglican church so here's some more edward seymour was executed here thomas seymour they were both brothers of jane seymour seymour wife of henry the eighth you had the likes of george boleyn 
was executed here in 1536. He was the brother of Anne Boleyn. Then you had Henry Howard in 1547, and he was executed here. He was the cousin of both Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, actually, to commemorate the tragic history, and in many cases, the martyrdom of those who, for the sake of their faith, country, or ideals, stared their lives, staked their lives, and lost. On the site, more than 125 were put to death, the names of some of whom are recorded here. So we have a couple more. So William Stanley, there's Sir Thomas More, and we have plenty more. Sir Simon of Sudbury, he was an Archbishop of Canterbury. Before Thomas More's execution, he proclaimed, I die the King's good servant and God first. Uh, the interesting thing about executions, ladies and gents, in London, the last execution, um, capital punishment was ruled out in 1965. But apparently, it, it can still be reenacted for high treason or sedition in this country. So, uh, one of the more famous sites again, the site of the ancient scaffold, where here the Earl of Kilmarnock and Lord Bal Balmerino suffered on the 18th of August 1746. But can you just imagine the rabble and the drunken revelry surrounding you as you were executed here around this area at the Tower of London? One of the darkest periods in London's history. So I'll just give you your view again there of the Tower of London. What's amazing as well is that it's amazing to think that the Beatles were number one in this country when the, they actually outlawed capital punishment. So not so long ago, in fact, but what I want to do is I'm just going to bring you up here to give you a last amazing view of the Tower of London. Now, when I said it was a punishment for treason, you can still be executed. That was up until 1998, not current day, of course. I doubt they'll be bringing back capital punishment for any treasonous subjects nowadays, ladies and gents. But there is just a little bit around here which is very interesting that I want to show you and that is part of the 2,000 year old Roman wall and you can see this yourself and there is a Roman soldier there so just as we're here so this is Tower Hill or Tower Green as well it's known as and this is r directly opposite the Tower of London framed by the shard and in the background, the Church of the Old Hallows by the Tower. So to get here, you would take the station here at Tower Hill. And this is Tower Hill Station. So I'm just gonna bring you around here. I just wanna show you evidence of that Roman wall, the 2000 year old city of London. This was built by the Romans surrounding the city. And again, if you are interested in Roman history, we do do a tour of the city of London. Be sure and check that out. Whilst I'm walking, I also want to thank you all personally and individually. There's too many to thank for your PayPal contributions, your buy me a coffees. And one of my favorites is the new thanks button that's on YouTube. That's proving a little popular with some of you all your donations no matter how small are greatly appreciated i see some regular names all the time there's steve and tina and maria and mike uh too many to mention but i will do my best to get back to you all and to thank you personally it really does make a big difference to our pockets nowadays so you really are gems and thank you so much for all your fabulous comments as well. And here is a statue believed to be the Roman Emperor Trajan. But this is evidence of the Roman wall, the 2000 year old city of London that surrounded it. And just a little bit of history about it over here. The London wall. And I'll read this out because I know some of you have difficulty reading it. 
This is one of the most impressive surviving sections of London's former city wall. The lower part with its characteristic tile bonding purses was built by the Romans around 200 AD. Its, its purpose may have been as much to control the passage of goods and people as for defence against this inner face on the side. The wall was reinforced by substantial earth rampart. Outside was a wide ditch. In the far right corner, evidence of an internal turret was found in excavation. It's probably contained a staircase giving access to the entry sentry wall. Complete with its battlements, a Roman wall would have been about 6.4 metres high. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, and another fine view of the Tower of London. So, as part of our execution sites tour, this is Tower Hill, and this is Sinead, signing out. Yeah.